Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today we're going to have a collection review I think you're going to like. Uh, but what I wanted to do first was to talk about something that came up. I had a picture of my watch on and someone said, oh, you're not wearing it with the right thing. <laughs> it was, she should wear a dress watch with something that doesn't look dressy. And uh, we're in the middle of a, of a real cold spell. We've got snow all over the place. And um, it's not sort of a situation where you dress up. And since I'm retired, I don't have to get dressed up anyway. But in terms of wearing a dress watch, if you're a collector, well, you know, you wear it wherever you want to. Uh, you know, I guess if you're going to go out and do some rough and tumble stuff, uh, yeah, sure, you want to wear, a, you know, something a little tougher than your dress watches. But anyway, for my everyday <laughs> outfit, uh, I'll wear dress watches and uh, <laughs> the, as a collector, I just have fun with my watches all the time. I better get inside. It is seriously cold out here. I think the high today was about, was single digit. I think it's about five or 10 degrees out here right now. Oh, well, no, that's would be, 10 would be double digit. <laughs> okay, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the watches now. Hi everybody, it was cold out there. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I gotta be warmed up. Okay, well, um, I'm wearing even on the inside. I got a window here and a window here, so <laughs> it helps to have something warm on. I'm still wearing uh, my dress watch <laughs> inappropriately. But you know, I tell you, whoever pointed that out was absolutely right. Uh, if you have a if you have on a dress watch and you have on a nice, oh, you know, coat and tie and uh, sleeve and really, really brings it out. But if you're a, a collector uh, like me who just loves wearing all of his watches, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'd wear a coat and tie and have my grubbiest uh, chronograph on. Um, but um, no more about me. We're going to be looking at a very interesting uh, collection today. And uh, this is uh, Fred's collection. And in, in my opinion, it is extremely well chosen. Uh, all of the dials are, are black, except for he showed, sent me some other ones. But it's really a neat uh, collection. Uh, the first one is a Gerard Perigo Traveler 2. And uh, since I've been sort of keeping my eye out for a traveler, I do have uh, one GMT, and I'll talk about that uh, a bit later. But um, the Gerard Perigo Traveler 2 is is a it's a real classic, really interesting uh, watch. It's a it's an automatic. It's uh, it's got the date and it uh, it, it has the date at uh, six o'clock now. What the it, it also has an alarm and a GMT. You can see at, at about uh, one or two o'clock. Uh, you can see the uh, wind up for the alarm. Um, I, I've got this Vostok with <laughs> my alarm clock. <laughs> anyway, I can't hear the alarm, so it doesn't help too much. Anyway, it's got a GMT. Um, so you have a this watch is is really neat. The thing I like about it. I, unless a, a black dial is done really well, I have a hard time seeing uh, the numbers. Now, in part, this is because of the, the ones I've chosen. Uh, they'll often have silver or, in terms of my Harry Winston, gold against a black dial. Um, and even on one of my favorite watches, my Harboring 2 also has a black dial. And... It has some thinner lines. This one has nice, big, f not fat, but clear. It's a really clear watch. I Some of the um, 
uh, some of the other the types are. He's got uh, two. There are two different times there, and I believe uh, currently that the arrow is for the alarm, and then the uh, uh, ten at the top is the hour for the for the GMT, and then at six o'clock you have your uh, date window. Uh, this is sort of an interesting. Uh, it's got a uh, the the movement is is based on an A-shield uh, AS5008 and it's it's been improved and, and it's sort of interesting on the automatic uh, later and uh, this is in the 90s there was a when um, Vacheron and Constantin came out with the original overseas they had a Gerard Perigo that they were using and it needed some improvement on, on the automatic so that was sort of an interesting kind of uh concept my old uh Vacheron Constantin uh was a fixed up Gerard Perigo and then this Gerard Perigo is a fixed up a shield so anyway cool watch uh <laughs> really a really a neat one to have Okay, uh, the next one is a Zenith, and uh, this one is uh, one of the early El Primeros, and it's it was a re-edition of the chronographs, one of the uh, uh, Carelli uh, chronographs from the 1960s, and it had been used by, uh, not this one, but it's a, it's a re-edition of one that used to be used by the uh, the Italian Air Force. It looks like the kind of watch that uh, Air Force would use. Clear as a bell again. I I, I have all of the black dials. <laughs> they aren't clear. This one is very clear. Beautiful uh, chronograph. And there's a and then with an El Primero movement. The it, this one is from a limited edition. I only made a thousand pieces of the re-edition. I think they made about 2,500 of the original one. And it's, it's got a 50-hour um, reserve on it, which is about two-day reserve, which is nice. Uh, I I've, uh, Some of my newer watches, uh, this one I think is my, uh, my new um, uh, H. Moser. I th pretty sure i think it's 120 hours it's really nice so i don't have to wind it up every day <laughs> okay um another cool watch i like this one a lot i have a soft spot for uh Zenith. all right the uh the next one i want to take a look at is a parmigiani tonda uh the it's uh metro metrograph metrograph is their chronograph and uh, Parmigiani Fleurier, this is such a cool watch. Um, the it has the central um, hours and minutes. Okay, so the hours and minutes are in the center. Now you see the big uh, sweep hand there, right up at twelve o'clock. That's the chronograph uh, timer. And then you have your regular seconds at three o'clock. Those are in small seconds that run with with the uh, watch. Then what it has is that you have a quarter of a second um, chronograph with the at nine o'clock. That's where you have your court, uh, your your chronograph. And then you have the um, uh, thirty minutes. And 12 hour counters with it too so that's pretty cool now at the bottom down there sort of in the middle of the uh, 12 hour counter you have the parmigiani uh, calendar which i really like i there was one person I, they they're really funny they don't like anything except the most conventional to me this was always cool uh they have a dot between the days and so this was on the set on the 30th uh, 29 dot 31. Hmm, what would that be? <laughs> uh, Parmigiani makes just wonderfully beautiful uh, watches, and same with the movement. You can see there's a shot there of the back of it. You can see the Geneva wave and the uh, the rotor. You can well the rotor's set upside down, so you can see the um, the escapement and the 
uh, balance wheel. Okay, uh, so this is a this is a neat watch. <laughs> now, the next one is the sort of I, I put two together uh, because if if you look at them closely, one uh, the one in the background is the Black Bay, uh, and the Black Bay won the 2013 uh, Grand Prix d'Orlogy de de Genève Revival Prize. And so it was, a, it was a cool watch to begin with. Now, it's true uh, that it had uh, originally had a, a 922 ETA movement in it. And that's okay. I mean, it was, uh, so it was the heritage of the old uh, Black Bay they had. And what was interesting is once they won that award, they got their own movement. Now, up until this time, as you probably know, Tudor is owned by Rolex, and it's sort of the considered the <laughs> the poor brother or the Cinderella <laughs> of it. But they're not. They're really cool watches. And um, uh, Fred was saying that even with the uh, ETA, he, he loved that Tudor. And then, and then, just right before I had this ready for the uh, review, uh, I sent me a picture of the other one. So he got the other one too with the, um, oh, what was it, the MT uh, fifty six twelve uh, movement in it, the, the in house movement, uh, and it's this is a a, a COSC certified uh, chronographer, which really is a good reason to get it. But if you look at it, you can see that it is very much the same. About the only difference is that there is a silver bezel instead of a, a, a black one. But it's uh, it's it's just a very cool watch. A lot of people are sort of poo-poo Tudor. I don't. I love them <laughs> myself. Okay. Um, now we'll go to uh, Tudor's big brother, the uh, uh, Rolex. Now, this is one, a uh, GMT Master uh, 2 was one that uh, I almost got. And the one I wanted was ex exactly this one. It was uh, the Batman, the one with the uh, black and blue um, bezel. The The reason I ended up not getting it <laughs> was that I blew all my money on another watch. And so I had to find one that I could afford at that time, which ended up to be one I ended up really liking, a little Zenith Elite uh, GMT. But I always liked this one because it was one that I had, uh, I was thinking of getting it. I think it was in the mix along with um, an Explorer 2 GMT uh, with the Polar um, dial on it. Uh, here again, uh, it, there's something else too about this watch. Some people don't like the magnify, uh, magnifier over the date. I do. Uh, I mean, most of my watches that with a date, except for the Parmigiani, a date's really hard to make out. Uh, but with the magnifying glass, you can see it nice and big. Uh, so this, uh, it's got the ceramic bezel. That's fine with me. Some people get all upset. Oh, they don't like the ceramic bezel. I don't know why not. I mean, you can... all right. Um, this next one is actually I, I put two together <laughs> when I mentioned to Fred that he said you got nothing but but uh, black um, dials on your watch. I don't know. He sent me a a, a Nomos and a couple other ones I'll show you in a second. He said these are also in the collection. I didn't want to. I, I guess you want to bring them out. Love that Nomos with that uh, brown uh, dial. That's a that's a sweetheart of a watch. I, I I generally like Nomos anyway. All right, now this the Cartier. A couple things about the Cartier. First of all, it's got the date at uh, about four thirty. Little little one at an angle. Drives some people nuts. I love them. I mean, it, it it's sort of like you know putting on your derby at a at an angle or something like that. I, I don't know why people get so upset about it. And besides, it, it doesn't block the three or whatever or the six uh, that often happens. They just tuck it right in there. It is a little small. And since it's a woman's watch, it, it tends to be small. It's sort of a cool um, uh, Santos. I, uh, I'm not sure what 
what movement is in this particular one. But um, one of the things about it, the, the style, I like that style. To me, it looks steampunk. I don't know what the, that may send the people at Cartier into a tizzy. <laughs> somebody call anything steampunk. Either that or what they'd, uh, somebody would wear in a movie, Dune. Uh, and I like it. Okay. But the way he got it was such an interesting story. This was given, I think a father got this for his daughter when she was just a little, either a baby or a small child. It was going to give it to her for her 18th birthday. Well, she, when she finally turned 18, she looked at it and didn't like it. So he, he sold it. And uh, Fred picked it up as a, an NOS because she never wore it. Didn't like the looks of it. I thought that was funny. Uh, anyhow, it does. It's, it's one of the. Um, I, I, I believe this is uh, belongs to Fred Wise, and you know, finally, there's something other than a black uh, dial on it. Okay, um, that's a cool looking watch, I think. Are the final uh, ones that um, that Fred sent? A couple stoas <laughs> again. The stoas that were sent were sort of like, hey. Uh, here are some watches that, that don't have the black dial. Okay, uh, that's fine. I like the looks of both of those stoas. I think they're sort of cool. All right. Um, now, I, I, usually what I like to do at the end of a, of a collection review is say, hey, you know, uh, oh, first of all, I'd love to hear from you what you have to say, what you think it, uh, would help Fred's collection. I know exactly what I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, first of all, I would I I would get a nice um, dress watch of some sort. The one with uh, perhaps a, a cream colored dial or or something. You got so many black dials <laughs> that if you like a black dial, so they can look very good on a formal watch. I might add, but. Uh, that's what I would go after. And if you like the Parmigiani, to me, the Parmigiani is a such a good buy. Uh, especially some of the older Culpas. My older Culpa was, uh, I love that watch, and they're they're pretty good deals because most people, they, they don't know that much about them. Um, they don't know that much about the company. Uh, they don't know the, the designer, Michael Parmigiani. Uh, that's true with a lot of, of uh, smaller uh, but very robust companies. Uh, they're owned by the Sandoz family, and they've got uh, a lot of clout. Uh, they're, um, that's one thing. I, of course, I would also, since I, <laughs> now that I have my Moser, if you can find a Moser from the 2000s, uh, 2008 or nine onward, Oh boy, those these these watches are are very good looking for dress watches. Um, Jaja Lacoutre has some very nice dress watches. Uh, everyone thinks of Reverso. You know, a man's Reverso can be a very very nice uh, dress watch. I'm glad I thought of that. But uh, a lot of times everyone thinks, ah, Reverso, I'll get that, or they'll get, or, uh, get a Master Control. Master Control is a nice one too. Um, what I found is that the tonneau shape, I like, I like the tonneau shape or even a rectangle shape for a dress watch. They're very sort of um, madman uh, kind of cool to them. All right. Well, listen, Fred, I can't thank you enough for these wonderful watches you sent me to review. And uh, this is, uh, like I said to, to viewers, this is a good opportunity for you if you'd like to have some comments. And also, too, if uh, if you'd like to subscribe, this is an invitation. Uh, you're more than welcome to subscribe. So until Friday, uh, this is Bill Sanders with Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collections.